Uh, I just, uh, it's not exactly a question, but it's just a few things that I'd like to clarify about the whole split. Up to 1919, we were a united body in the IRA and the Sunday here. In 1919, De Valera was rescued from Lincoln Prison. I think that was the greatest mistake that was ever made. <laughs> Now, Canagale had collected over $5 million in bonds at that time. Judge Cohallan was the chairman. He had a meeting in the Astor Hotel. And after the ordinary meeting being over, he, with great pleasure, said, now we've come to the point where this money has to be dispensed with. De Valero, who was sitting by his side, tapped him on the side and said, I'll take care of that. <laughs> the judge, of course, who was a man who wasn't very much challenged on anything, uh, felt, what's this? De Valero pointed out to him, I am president of the Irish Republic. Those bonds were gathered in the name of the Irish Republican and I'll take the bonds. Cohalan told them under no circumstances, and there the division began. They tried to reconcile it. Joe McGarrity, who was a great friend of De Valera, and sided with him, tried to <coughs> do it. The Bishop of Buffalo, Bishop Turner, was brought in on the fair, and the talker <coughs> had everything settled. The next day, everything was adrift again. So these bonds, never, never went to Ireland. Well, I must say, some of them did, because finally there was a lawsuit. The free state government tried to get the bonds. Republicans opposed it. When I came to <coughs> America in 1927, I came as a witness for the Republic for these bonds. I never appeared in court because the first time uh, I did appear in court, but the first time I appeared there, they decided that instead of going through the usual judicial things, the three judges were decided. The three judges decided to return the bonds to the policyholders. They couldn't give them to the free state because they were never collected for the free state, and they did not want them given to the republic because the republic was not established. But these were not for the established republic were to help to establish the Republic. But the court, anyhow, did not want to give them to the Republican side, and they decided to return <coughs> the bonds. And a lot of those bonds were De Valera, uh, Frank Aiken came out here, representing De Valera, and collected a lot of the bonds to start the Irish press in Ireland. These are, are the only money or bonds that went to Ireland were those collected to establish the affair. I came, when I came to America, I spoke to Judge Cohalan, though I hated the man for not, the only reason was that he didn't allow money to come to Ireland when it was so badly needed. He told me the story, and uh, Joe McGarrity sort of verified that story about the bonds and what De Valera and himself had a falling out. The clan, it split the clan of Gale. A lot of them decided to go with De Valera, and a lot of them remained with Cohalan and the boy. And when I came out here, there were two IRA. One of them we called the old IRA, which was under Cohalan and the boy, and the other was called IRA, uh, Canagale and IRA. So we had two divisions here, and that remained up to the present struggle that started 20 years ago when I appealed to the old clan to come around and be one, and they did. There's not many of their members existent today, maybe one or two here and there through the country, but there's no old clan members in New York whatsoever. So this is the sort of division that we have.
in the same course. Uh, de Valera then, in nine, uh, one of the reasons uh, John Cronin is right when he says that the boy and Cohalan and these decided first, I believe, they made a statement in, against the treaty, and then when they found De Valera was on the treaty side, they changed over against the treaty. If De Valera had gone with the treaty, the boy and Cohalan would have been with the Republican side. This is the way these enmities and haters, personal things, uh, affect a movement. But when De Valera went into the doll, I opposed it. I was still in Ireland when he started to go in, and he split the movement there. He split the movement again here when I came because I opposed it. I still oppose anyone going into the doll. The doll is a corrupt body, no matter how you. <coughs> look at it, it was signed illegally by people who had no authority to sign. It was forced on the Irish people by the hierarchy of Catholic hierarchy of Ireland, you might say. Terrible bulldoggery going on about how the treaty was voted on. And they never dissolved the second dog. So for years, up to 1938 particularly, the doll was still in charge, the second doll was still in charge of the Irish Republican Army. In 1938, they handed the army, told them they were on their own, because there was only about seven members of the old doll existing. There's one member still alive of the second doll, and that's Tom McGuire in Mayo, a hundred years old on uh, the day of the 20th, yesterday. He was 100 years old yesterday, 28th of March. He's the only existing man, and he today is against, he's still a Republican. He's against the free state. He's against anyone going into the free state. He's out and out a Republican. Personally, without saying so, to be offensive to anybody, I still am a friend of Tom Doe McGuire. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, so we can't take any more questions. But what I think is very important is to have a sense of history, because before you can make any changes in the present for the future, you have to know who you are, where you came from. And I have to say that the rich tradition in the United States of support for the Republican movement is clearly exemplified by people like Mike Flannery and like Sean Cronin and some of the others here. Many years from now, uh, perhaps that history will not be able to told firsthand. And I think that we here and through this film can get a tremendous sense of what's been happening here in the United States. And one last thing that I'd like to say is that we have to play our part here in the United States. And Clan Nagel has never faulted from its strong commitment to say that England has no right to be in Ireland, that the only solution is for the Brits to get out of Ireland, and we completely endorse the right of the Irish Republican Army to get the Brits out of Ireland. <laughs>